Right, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a CIS onto a Canon, it's a Canon IP4500. IP4500. I've done quite a bit of preparation work before the film starts to try and save a bit of time on video. We'll start at the beginning. You get the head, it comes with the uh, printer, and if you look on there, let's get the light there, there, each one of those has got a little rubber ring placed on it. Those rubber rings come in with the kit, four small ones, one big one. You must, without fail, put those on first. I don't know if you can see clearly enough, but there might be a, a dot or two of ink on these where I've already been testing the system. That it is very important that those rubber rings are there on the head. There's a CIS with some orange clips off to save time. But what we're going to do is get straight into it. You switch your printer on. And straight away it will bring the carriage out to here. Lift that up and put your head in. There, the head's into place and we've got to get the CIS in there. Right, I've got the CIS here with four clips off. I've left one on just to show you how they come off. You just clip the orange clip up and off. You've got all of them there. They are currently, we'll move them, move them out of the way, they go fly everywhere. They're currently upside down with the chips facing us. What we have to do now is put them into there. So all we have to do is turn them over and put them in. Then just click each one down. Some will light up, some won't. Well, I know this is going to work, so I've already tested it. If one doesn't light up, it doesn't matter what it's going to do. Right, you've got the CIS in there and put the grey lever down. And we're ready to go on to the next stage. Now I've moved the camera up a bit just to talk about this ridge here that they've put onto this printer. It comes down here. So this prevents us putting a support arm here to hold the piping. We can't put one across the back or the lid's going to be stuck up like that. So what I've done is adapt another, uh, another arm that I use, support arm. I've just adapted it by bending it over like that, heated it up, bending it over. And what I'm going to do, if you see here, this is your CD tray. Well there's a gap down there. I'm going to put it down so you can see, just here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the middle and stick that on there. It's got a sticky pad on it, there, that is stuck into place to hold the piping. So then get the piping, off the CIS if you look there, Ooh, lock the camera there, left, no twists, curling back on itself and onto here. Then just get this little bit that also comes into that hole, into that hole, and click it in. That's going to hold the piping there. Got that a bit too long there. Now that has got to be long enough to go across there, so that's about it. There. When it's sticking up like that, once you've done it, just push it down. And it'll be okay. Then the um, piping comes across to the right, and we're going to put a clip on the right hand side to uh, keep it in a straight line. So I've moved the camera around, the things here to hold the piping, so we come straight across with it, like this, into there, get your black bit that's with it, and clip that into place. There, that's holding your piping into place. So we've actually got that CIS on there, but before we go to making it work, I'll just point out a couple of other things. If you notice there, i better move the camera again, on the right hand side we've got the ink bottles. It's very important that those ink bottles are on the same level as the printer. You can see I've got it on the table there. The printer's on the table, so the ink bottles must be on the table. If you lift them higher than the printer, gravity will pull the ink through and flood your printer and ruin it. So do remember, it must be that height. Whatever you do, if you see air in the pipes or anything like that, do not be tempted to lift that higher, because it will flood your printer. The air will go anyway. And once you've got them set up, if you look here, there's a little bung there. I've only put one in, but all the way along here, you've got little bungs. You take what you take them out. I put one in to save time. You put one of those in each one, so you end up with five of those. They are the airflow ones. They let the air in, but won't let the ink out if you accidentally knock it. So it's very important that same level. Don't forget those. If you don't take these bungs out, the ink will not flow. You must have air going in. So those two things are very important. Now let's see what we've got to do next. Now, as with all printers, they have uh, lid sensors on, so that they think the lid is shut, and we have to engage that because the lid isn't going to go right down because of the piping. 
and your lid sensor here is just there there is a little catch there what you need to do all I've got is a bit of paper I'm going to jam it in there holding that down and see it move straight away it thinks the lid is closed so anything in there just to hold it down and your printer is ready to work if at any time your head comes out here and stays in and won't move anywhere it means that that's come loose you need to put it in again or a bit tighter or whatever but there the uh, printer is going through its sequence it's recognized the cartridges we just got to wait for the boring bit while it does all its the jiggery pokery to get ready and uh, we'll just push that back up the CD tray so you can see that that fits all okay and everything's going to work fine now if we look in there that's coming across and up now I'm looking at that and I'm just thinking to myself that is a little bit tight it might not reach all the way across here under here so what I'm going to do I'm going to pull a bit of slack through through there I'll pull the camera down to do it pull a bit of slack through and that's it just to be sure there's enough give here to go under here and all the way across to the left you don't want a great big load of slack but give it a bit like that make sure there's no twists there must be no twists a bit of slack there and everything will be okay so the cartridges I've recognized now and with this uh, piece of paper in we'll be able to print with the lid open so I'm going to the uh, computer and I'm going to print a page this is the test page that I normally print uh, just a different colors to make sure everything's going okay and again Canon cartridges are so slow um, it will be a bit before it actually prints this paper it doesn't matter what you put in there though cartridges or a CIS Canon, Canon printers will always take this long going through anything it doesn't make there I just uh, stopped the um, film there until it went through all that sequence it's crazy just waiting all that time but now you can see it's printing now It'll print all the uh, colours. And there we go there. Oh, it's got to print more than one page. I must have had it on more than one. But there you go. All four. Perfect. Perfect print. Good colours. And there it is printing away. And just to pull the lid down so you can see it prints the lid. It won't go all the way down so don't force it. Just pull it down, rest it like that. It'll stay open a little bit, about you know, about an inch. But there's nothing we can do about that. There it is, printing away with the lid almost down. But if you're going to save a load of money on your printing, I think an inch on the lid doesn't matter, does it? It's a shame, really, because I do prefer to have an arm coming off the back. But we can't put in. Whoop, not the camera over there. We can't put a um, arm here coming this way because this ridge that Canon have put on that one there if I've got an arm there that ridge comes down stops on the ridge and the lid is stuck up like that so I've done that one coming from the front so we can get at least get it down most of the way so there it is printed away merrily that's about it really not much more I can tell you thanks for watching